There are certain things that COD pros do on the regular that make them as good as they actually are, make them better players every single day. These habits are things that COD pros do that just elevate their game, take them to the next level over time, and they're things that you can do too to improve your game as well. So today, that's what we're talking about, guys. I hope you guys are ready for this one because I am very excited to talk about this per use. So without further ado, let's get right into this one. Let's go. So of course, in this video, there's gonna be a handful of things that come off as pretty obvious, but then there's gonna be some other things that I think are gonna be pretty interesting and a little bit different. And of course, like if you think about it, basically all of the COD Pro's skills, they start out as habits that you'd use in game or you use as a human being. And then they turn into important skills for competitive Call of Duty in the future or now in the present. So realistically, for now years, the best COD pros have developed these habits that have turned into skills inside the game itself over time. And so now with that said, I think we can finally get into our first habit. And like I said, all of them are going to span a variety of different areas of COD as in life, things they do with their schedule or certain small things that they end up doing. So the first thing is in the game itself. So a habit that they always have is to master the game's movement first. Basically, you go into a custom game and you're out there trying to learn slide cancels, trying to learn how you slide, how you move, how you jump, how you mantle, certain aspects of the maps themselves, how to utilize certain things based off bomb positionings or based around hard points or where the hard points actually are. And, and they're exploring the map and learning those things. And that is fundamental to a pro success is spending a lot of time inside custom games trying to get used and acclimated to the new movement of that game the new meta of that game and different spots that you can use and this is something that i think all of us could probably invest more time in like i know for a fact that that's something that i need to do more of is just hop into a custom game and just explore for like an hour on certain maps or two hours on certain maps give it some time to get used to certain things try out some new lines of sight and get a really really good feel for the movement of the game especially right when the game comes out or now heading into league play trying to get reacclimated with a few things, find out and learn some new things is also really important. That's the first habit we got. So now heading on to the second habit, another one that's really interesting. The second thing is something that so many coaches in COD have talked about. And I've heard even recently from a lot of different guys is the mindset in which pros approach practice. And again, this is something that is hard and not all pros are the best that to say the least, but the best pros at the best points in their career, approach practice in a way that was most beneficial for them in the sense that they are trying to learn not to win. And, and at the end of the day, like learning in a scrim or in a practice or whatever it is when you're playing COD isn't always going to teach you the most. Oftentimes you learn the best by seeing what the opposing team did to beat you and the mistakes that you made in a loss. And oftentimes that can be what leads to the best improvement and how you get better. But with the mindset of trying to win the map, you end up not playing the best Call of Duty that in the long run will give you the best chance for success to win. Like for example, if you're playing against a team and you're playing against players that are definitely significantly worse than you, and you're going in there just trying to gun them, your ego challenging and whatever it is, and maybe because of that strategy in that specific game against that specific team, you're going to win by more than you would have by playing fundamentally good Call of Duty because it's a little bit less aggressive, a little bit more patient. But the thing is, in the long term, playing in that really aggressive, unreasonable way hurts these pro teams in the long run or hurts you in the long run instead of every day trying to practice the fundamentals that make you better. And the best pros and the best teams do that day in and day out to continue to improve. So the third thing is some habits about how pros approach communication and things that they've done to help develop their communication over time. Now, obviously inside the game itself, a lot of these things have turned into skills that you would teach if you're teaching a player how to be a good COD player, like how you call out using the names of the opposing team's players inside the game, counting the kill feed, things like that, like actual communication techniques inside the game itself that help you improve and those habits you have to develop over time to turn into skills in the game itself. That's obviously really important, but of course, how they approach their teammates and habits about how they approach getting better each day and addressing certain issues on the team are very important. For example, it takes a player being very honest about his mistakes and his own weaknesses to help identify the weaknesses and strengths of other players and areas that they can improve on their team as well. And so oftentimes the best players are identifying things that they're doing bad. And then they're using those things to catalyst into a conversation about how the whole team is playing bad. And some of the best communicators in Call of Duty do that very, very well. And they help their team improve in that sense. Obviously there could still be some improvement in that category for some of the pros in the league. And it's a habit they've developed over years and years of Call of Duty. So the next thing is a little bit more of a caveat type thing 
It's about how they use like caffeine and, and monitoring their caffeine intake. There's a lot of pros out there that basically don't ever take caffeine until a day of an event. And surprisingly, there actually are a lot of pros out there that monitor and really watch how much caffeine they take during an average week, if it's any at all. And there are some pros that actually don't drink any caffeine at all up until like an event or something like that. So that when they do take caffeine, their body reacts at a higher level to it. A lot of pros end up doing that. Some really monitor how much they drink during the week and then uptick it a little bit for events to make sure that they're in a better mindset. It's kind of that same effect where you're taking a little bit during the week, but then you make sure that you up it for just the events and you go back down to your minimum amount. Obviously you wanna stay within like a healthy, reasonable amount. You don't wanna be tweaking on the sticks with like 500 milligrams of caffeine in your system. You wanna be, you know, in a pretty consistent spot, but a lot of pros actually really do pay attention to that and they use it inside of events to stay cracked. You know how it goes. So, so I've always thought that that was a really interesting one. Another habit is pretty obvious, but it's the dedication and passion, the consistent amount of playing per day. And one habit that I think is kind of interesting is how some pros really switch up and change the type of experiences they have inside of COD itself with how they play to keep it fresh for them or at least keep it a little bit more fresh than it would be otherwise playing like eight to 10 hours a day or more than that sometimes. Oftentimes that, that comes with like not streaming during scrims, but then streaming after scrims during eights or something along those lines to change up your experiences. They use streaming in a way to separate their experiences and create for a little bit more like of a, a diverse experience with how they play the game. Then of course they're switching up playing eights, scrimming, playing tournaments. They do a lot of different things to keep their experience fresh that allows them to play more in the game than just grinding one thing over and over. Of course, league play will help that as well when it comes out, giving them more opportunities to play. Nowadays, COD's a little bit more regimented than it used to be, where some pros only play like maybe six hours a day or something like that, where some are playing like 12 plus hours a day, depending on the situation. The age old saying is quality over quantity when it comes to practice, which is definitely the case in a lot of ways for COD. But of course, it can never hurt to grind that little bit extra amount to give you a little bit of some sort of edge in how you improve throughout the time, throughout the game, but specifically how long they are intentionally practicing with that mindset that we were talking about earlier is basically the consistent amount every single day, no matter what. And that consistency, bringing that exact amount of passion and focus to improving is really important with how you play the game to improve and the habits that the COD pros have. So the last few habits here are pretty straightforward. This one is basically not getting too high or low on criticism or praise or anger or happiness or whatever it is, having a very low key mindset. In a lot of ways, golf's mindset is very similar to Call of Duty's with how you have to stay you know, mentally dialed in. You have to stay on top of your game with your mental processing, your ability to focus and dial in on small things. And in that sense, that's really, really important. There's not all guys do this very, very well, but the best pros are very good at dialing in their focus and their emotions on a dime. And you'll see that with like, for example, a guy like Tiger Woods in golf would get pissed. He would be so mad. But then at times he would just immediately snap right back into focus mode. And then seconds later, he'd be playing his best golf again. That's what the best pros in COD are also able to do. They're able to get pissed or hyped. And then within two seconds are dialed back in to being just as focused as they were before. And that takes practice. That's not easy to do. You have to really control your emotions, your thoughts, overall, how you focus on the game and not let your mind wander or get distracted about the effects that the game could have or anything else besides how you and your team are playing. And that's all really important to a pro success as well. So the last thing obviously is just health related. A lot of the pros really do exercise pretty regularly. They eat at least semi healthy and they have a very consistent diet. And a lot of the pros regulate what they're eating, you know, before events, similar to athletes in that sense, where in the NFL, you might have like a big pasta dinner 24 hours before your big match or whatever it is, you know, things like that. The pros definitely do a very good job of regimenting their food intake. At least a lot of them do. Some don't, obviously, but some do a very good job of that. And as the pro scene has developed, that's become more and more important. And we started seeing team nutritions for the CDL teams. And also we started seeing some team psychologists for esports and how that plays. And that's important to that mindset as well. The other thing that I want to throw in there was the temperature of the room. Some pros really are regimented with the temperature of their room. Obviously it depends on the person, depends on the situation, depends on the house or wherever you're, wherever you're living. But oftentimes if you're gaming for like eight hours, the temperature in the room will definitely rise over time. And so a lot of pros, 
spend a lot of time or money or whatever it is trying to figure out a way to really regiment the the temperature in the room to make sure your hands are always warm but you're not like sweating to make sure your hands aren't sweaty but they're definitely not cold you know and those types of things as well are also really important to a, to a pro's consistency and their success day in and day out. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video of all of these habits that Picard pros have, and hopefully you yourself can implement a few of them as well to make yourself a little bit better at Call of Duty. So if you guys enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe, share the video if you guys really enjoyed it. But as always, guys, I'm your boy, Sebastian Lee, and we will see you next time. I'm out.